In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your lightnings lighted up the world, the earth trembled and shook. Lightnings lighted up the world, the earth trembled and shook. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully fo foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear from Holy Scripture. The Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord is from Exodus chapter 34. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining. And Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak together, the gradual appointed for the day. You are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The epistle is from 2 Peter chapter 1. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased, we ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John his brother, 
and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, number 414, "'Tis Good Lord to Be Here." In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, epis the epiphany season comes to a close with the greatest of epiphanies in our gospel. We hear of Jesus and how Jesus is presented to us in his glory as fully man and fully God. We also hear of Jesus and the majesty of his divine authority. The epiphanies are his glory and his authority. And these things were revealed to men on a mountain. God chooses high places for high transactions. The law was given upon Mount Sinai. The gospel was sealed upon Mount Calvary. And our Lord Jesus Christ was transfigured upon a mountain. The law, the gospel, and Jesus Christ. In the transactions of God, these three things are inseparable. 
in this particular mountaintop transaction, the transfiguration of Jesus tells us, tells us of his glory and his authority. And his glory was visible. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. This was a manifestation of his glory. But what does this mean? For there was no change to Jesus as a person. He was before and would continue to be the Son of God. He was before and would continue to be the Son of Man. There was, however, a change in appearance. Jesus, who walked and talked with the despised and lowly. Jesus, who ate at the tables of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus, who associated with the humble, he who was himself the very example of humility, could now be seen in his glory. He's always had that glory. This is the glory that did not appear as of yet to the eyes of all men, but on this day of his transfiguration appeared to just a few. These people... These men who spoke about God later on as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. St. John writes about this, Jesus, whom he calls the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The apostles and disciples and Many others, well, they certainly beheld the glory of Jesus Christ in his words, in his teachings, that which he proclaimed. But John, John, the beloved disciple, had this particular manifestation of glory in mind. The word became flesh is connected to the transfiguration of our Lord. Well, it certainly would have made a deep and lasting impression on John, just as it made a life-changing impression upon Peter. Peter, who says, We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory... This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice, born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. The transfiguration. The transfiguration is a display of the Lord's majesty, which could not be forgotten by the men who witnessed it. Now again, there was no new power from the Father given to his Son on the Mount of Transfiguration. The power in the person of Jesus had been with him since his incarnation. What was new was that this glory was now made manifest. It was revealed. It was an epiphany. The word the eternal Son of God, was already, as we confess, God of God and light of light. And then he became flesh. Jesus, becoming flesh, did not lose the status of being God. Jesus Christ did not become less godlike or less divine when he was born of a woman. Be it the babe in the manger... The two-year-old Jesus, the twelve-year-old Jesus, he always reigned supreme in the entire universe. Even when he was nailed in bloody humility on the next mountaintop, 
Mount Calvary. Even then, he was Lord of all. On that cross, as he hung, Jesus had all the power of heaven and on earth. And on the Mount of Transfiguration, that glory simply shone forth. You see, in Jesus, the eternal Son of God assumed humanity, flesh and blood. And the humanity of Jesus became one with his divinity. And the result is his human nature became partaker of his glory. And it was visible that day. Jesus Christ, the man, was himself the Almighty Lord. Colossians 2.9 For in Christ the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And in the transfiguration, the divinity of Christ shone forth. His glory beamed forth. And most of the time, Jesus had restrained during the days of his, humilia during the days of his humiliation. From Philippians, Jesus Christ, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus, who was, cru who was crucified, was always nonetheless the king of glory. And his glory then burst forth on that mount. Our Lord appeared very bright. It appeared in his face and it appeared in his clothes. How bright? Human terms can only express it so far. The only words that can express it to us in human terms were as bright as light, as white as light itself. In Mark's gospel, St. Mark says it was intensely, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. St. Luke calls it dazzling white. Well, since human terms fall short, we can simply say that there is nothing brighter. The brightness of Christ's glory expresses the image of his person. And while Peter was still speaking, when behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Christ is declared to be the eternal Son of God. Therefore, he holds divine authority, to which we all must bow in reverence. It is authority that on that day of transfiguration was seen and heard. Jesus did not usually appear this way. Isaiah of the Old Testament speaks of Christ. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. And Jesus not only appeared as a mere man, but even humbled himself, and became obedient unto death. Jesus did not appear glorious to men as he was dying on the cross. Suffering and death do not appear to us as glorious moments, but rather it appears weak. It appears gory. But in the design of God to save your soul, he does not seek to convince you by sight. What should convince you is the voice of authority that came from the bright cloud that day. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. You want to be convinced of your faith? Listen to him. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And since the testimony given by God is, 
that Jesus is the eternal Son, his authority must be recognized by all. Just as Peter said, he received honor and glory from God the Father. Listen to him. Listen to Christ. He is your guide. He is your king. Jesus Christ says to you, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus even says of his own words, the words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. These words, have, these words have power. These words bring the light of truth. These words deliver your heart from the bondage to sin. There are no other words you should listen to more. Jesus has loved you unto the point of death. Jesus, who has loved you, stretches out his hands now to save you. Jesus speaks to you now through his word of faith. Right now, just as he has so many times before, he says to you, follow me, that you might have life. Have there been times you've declined to come to church in the past for reasons that do not seem respectable? When you turn away from his word, you turn away from the word incarnate. And on every day of the Lord, on Sunday morning, have you made the good confession of Peter who says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. It's no small wonder that the men with Christ, when they heard God's voice, it's no small wonder that they were terrified. In the presence of the supernatural, the souls of men tremble for a reason. When the glory of the Lord shone around the shepherds near Bethlehem, they were filled with great fear. At the resurrection, the angel of the Lord's appearance was white like lightning, and for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. And on the stormy seas, the authoritative Jesus rebuked the wind and stilled the sea, and the disciples were filled with great fear. Mankind is conscious of sin. Mankind is conscious of deserving damnation. Be it a divine appearance, a divine voice, a divine action, these things naturally strike terror to the sinner's soul. Fear is the testimony of our own disordered nature. Repent for your sins and receive the full forgiveness of them from your glorious, crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And the company you shall keep with him is forever. Company of Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Peter beheld the glory of his Lord. Peter now felt the comfort of being separated from the world and being present with the Savior. He thought that it would be a very blessed thing if it could continue to be that way. That is the reason for his request. He says it is good that we are here. And Peter even continues, if you wish, if it is your will, O Lord. Peter rightfully desired the company of heaven. Peter rightfully leaves it up to the desire of the Lord. So then, Peter asked Jesus a question for the right reason. 
But the question was not devoid of selfishness. He says, if you wish, I will make three tents here. So Peter desired the continued company of the Lord of glory. Peter did not desire his Lord's lowliness and suffering. Peter was forgetful of the necessity of the cross that had been told to him. You see, Peter's conscience hid from him the necessary tribulations to come before the kingdom of glory is reached. But we too want the Lord of glory's company. We too want the enjoyment of Christ's splendor and beauty. We want to see the Lord. For we have the assurance of our sins being forgiven. And we think that we are readier than ever to exclaim, it is good, Lord, to be here. Let us make three tents and stay for a while. And this is good. We rightfully desire the company of Christ in heaven. But like Peter, we overlook that there are still foes for us to face. That we must fight the good fight of faith. That we must behold our Savior in his suffering. And that we ourselves must be persecuted as his followers. We must take up our crosses and endure affliction. We have our work to do. We must continue our journey. The time for rest from work is when evening comes. Deuteronomy chapter 23. But that time is not yet. It'll only be for a little while. Only a little while. And we shall see today's promise with our own eyes. What else is in this promise? Well, the, those who have departed in the faith are still alive. And the bodies of the dead shall rise again. Behold, there appeared to Peter and James and John, Moses and Elijah. 1,500 years earlier, Moses died and was buried. 900 years earlier, Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Old Testament Moses and Old Testament Elijah appeared to the apostles. These were Moses and Elijah themselves. They were not apparitions. They were not ghosts. They were not holographic images. And they were certainly not in any sort of dreamlike state. It was Moses and it was Elijah. They were of the days of old, but yet they were with Christ. Christ, of whom all the prophets bear witness. Christ, of whom they themselves prophesied. That they prophesied that he was their redemption by his suffering, by his death. So my friends, those who die in the faith are still alive and quite happy. It's good for them to be there. The disciples beheld Moses and Elijah as living people. Five chapters later in Matthew, Jesus says, And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. Jesus who speaks these words, was transfigured before the disciples. He is your Lord. He is your God. And by the grace of God, you have heard his words. The truth has been made known to you that there is salvation in Christ and in no one else. The epiphany season comes to a close with some great epiphanies in our gospel. The transfiguration of our Lord took place on a mountain. And in the coming church year season, we look forward to the next mountain, Mount Calvary, where the greatest of transactions took place. The payment for sin, not with gold or silver, but with holy, precious blood.
In the name of Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand as you're able. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, In your Son, your glory tabernacled in human flesh and blood to win for us eternal life. Open the eyes of all people to see your glory in the face of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you admonish your children to listen to your Son. Give us ears to hear him as he speaks to us through his holy word and sacraments. And grant us faith to believe that he delivers forgiveness, life, and salvation to us through the same. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah and our, at our Lord's glorious transfiguration, you reveal to us that all the law and the prophets are fulfilled in him. Send your blessing upon the pastors and servants of your church, that all their preaching and teaching would flow from the right understanding that all scripture testifies of Christ and his work for our eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, bless the families of your church, that parents would teach the faith to their children and that the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in all households. Remember all expectant mothers, that they and their babies would be kept healthy throughout their pregnancies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, look with compassion on those in need, especially Kay, Bev, Dale, Helen, Kathy, Curtis, Rosie, Julie, Bill, Teresa, Carlton, Tom, Susan, Ginger, Norm, Carol, Steve, Laverna, Martha, Carl, Gladys, Carol, Joe, Myrna, Linda, and Charlene. Grant them relief and comfort through the promise of eternal glory with Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, how lovely is the dwelling place of your Son, Jesus Christ who invites sinners to eat and drink of his body and blood. Grant to all who come to this feast repentant hearts that they would receive forgiveness and be strengthened in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, we give you thanks for Moses, Elijah, 
Peter, James, John, and all who have fallen asleep, trusting in your promises. Keep us in this faith by your Spirit, and bring us with your saints to behold the fullness of Christ's glory in his kingdom, which has no end. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we worship our Lord with our offering. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples, that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection, and with all the faithful look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand as we thank the Lord. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our hymn to depart is number 537, Beautiful Savior.